Hi, and welcome to the Aging Answers Podcast. My name is Rob Fabian with Age of Central Texas. We are a regional nonprofit organization that serves older adults and family caregivers. And today joining us is Joy Jenkins from the Age Thrive Social and Wellness Center. Joy is our nurse at the center in the Austin area. And today we are going to talk about heat and aging. As we know, summer is upon us here in Central Texas, and the forecasters are already telling us that this year is going to be one of the hottest summers on record. And we know that older adults are more susceptible to illness from heat than other members of the population. So Joy, thank you so much for joining us to talk today about how we can help protect ourselves and our older loved ones. You're welcome. Thanks, Rob. Thank you for inviting me. And I know you've got a great presentation for us. Go ahead and share your screen. Okay, here we go. Terrific, we can see it. You can see it? Yes. Okay, let me make sure it is the right size here. There it goes, okay. Heat and aging, are we ready? Okay, okay, hot weather safety tips for older adults. So like Rob said, this is going to be a hot summer and they recommend when the temperature climbs above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which in Texas is pretty much most of the year, older adults need to take precautions to avoid heat related illness. Um, every summer, uh, Americans die around 600, um, and older adults and those with disabilities are especially at high risk. So we need to take precautions. So precautions, how to stay safe when it's too hot. Obviously stay away from direct sun exposure as much as possible. That means being straight out, not in the shade. Try to plan your activities early morning or sunset. That and stay hydrated. Number one, stay hydrated. Drink water, lots of water in the summer. I know sometimes as we age, we we're not as thirsty. We don't feel as thirsty. If you're going to be in the sun, drink water, whether you feel thirsty or not. Just drink the water. Avoid caffeine and alcohol because um, they can dehydrate you by making you urinate more and make you go to the bathroom more, so you lose more of your water. Dress appropriately in Texas, wear loose, light-colored clothing, and I recommend a hat. When I go out, I wear a hat because you that sun beating on your head, too much. Sunscreen, use a broad-spectrum sunscreen. It says SPF of 15 or higher, I'd go higher. I would go higher. Apply to all exposed skin, all of it, even if it's your head. If there's bare skin, exposed skin, cover it, cover it. Air conditioning, that's our friend in Texas. Spend as much time as possible, as possible in air conditioned spaces. If you don't have air conditioning, look for places that do. Libraries, malls, community centers, wherever you can find air conditioning, try to stay in it when it's really hot outside. Um, cooling down. If perhaps you can't have access to an air conditioner or you're just overheated, take tepid, like room temperature, don't do too cold. It's not good. But take tepid showers or bath. Or if you want to, just take a wet washcloth, a cool washcloth. Put them on your wrists, your ankles, your armpits, or around your neck. That's a really good place. That's where I usually put them for people is right around their neck. Cools you down faster. So if you do get out in the sun too much, how can you spot and treat those heat-related illnesses? Um, we're going to start from with the heat syncope. That's just feigning, just the word for feigning. Um, it's feigning caused by high temperatures. Uh, warning signs, you'll usually feel dizzy. Um, some people say they'll see things in a tunnel vision or black and white. If you start feeling like that, sit down, lie down immediately and drink water. Get out of the sun, get out of the heat, drink some water. Dehydration. This is something that is an ongoing issue um, for older adults. Sometimes we don't feel thirsty. Drink the water anyway if you're going to be outside. 
Dehydration is a loss of water in your body and it can be very serious, especially for older adults. Warning signs of dehydration is weakness, headache, muscle cramps. That's a big sign if you're in the heat and you have muscle cramps. Dizziness, confusion, or fainting. Um, if you feel like you're dehydrated, of course, drink plenty of water. And if you have them, sports drinks, um, sports drinks have electrolytes. I, I like water, but if you have the sports drinks and you are dehydrated, it doesn't hurt to drink them because electrolytes, they play a role with your heartbeat. And if you're overheated and if you're um, an older adult and you may take medications or have heart issues, you may want to drink the, the Gatorade electrolyte type things. If you get dehydrated and you have a heart condition or you take diuretics, which are water pills, you need to let your doctor know that you were dehydrated and follow up. All right, heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion is a serious health problem caused by too much heat and dehydration. This one can be serious. If you don't take care of it, it can lead to heat stroke, which is very serious. So heat exhaustion warning signs would be heavy sweating, muscle cramps, tiredness, weakness, paleness, cold or clammy skin, dizziness, headache, nausea or vomiting, a fast and weak pulse. It'll be a fast but weak pulse and fainting. Usually the body temperature is anywhere normal. It can go up to like 104 with heat exhaustion. If you feel like this is happening to you, move to a cool place, shady place right away and drink plenty of cool fluids. If you have high blood pressure or heart problems or don't feel better quickly, call 911. If we look down here, this is the heat exhaustion, this little right here, there's a difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. You'll see over here with heat exhaustion, you'll have a rapid weak pulse. When you feel their pulse, it'll be weak. When you go over to heat stroke, it'll be a strong pulse because your heart's trying to cool your body. And also you won't sweat usually during heat stroke. Your body can't sweat anymore. That's the difference is if you're still sweating, heat exhaustion, your pulse is weak, heat exhaustion. If that pulse starts going strong and you're not sweating, that's dangerous, that's heat stroke. We're gonna go on to heat stroke. So heat stroke is very dangerous. It's a very dangerous rise in your body temperature, usually 104 or higher. Now this can happen gradually in older adults. It may take two, three, four days of them being exposed to the heat. So that's the scary part. It doesn't just happen like this. It can, it can take days. So if you have a body temperature of 104 or higher, red, hot, dry skin, because you're not sweating anymore, a fast pulse, headache, dizziness, nausea and vomiting, confusion or lethargy and passing out, call 911 immediately. Do not, do not delay with heat stroke. Move to a cool shady place and take off or loosen your clothing. If possible, douse yourself in cool water or put your clothes in cool water. Or once again, you can use your wrist, your ankles, your armpits and your neck to lower your body temperature while you're waiting for 911. It's very important to get medical help if you think you're having heat stroke, very important. This is the differences again, because people ask me that sometimes the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. So this is just a little, like I said, with heat exhaustion, you'll have sweaty, cool, clammy skin still and a weak pulse. But with heat stroke, you're not sweating anymore and your pulse is strong. Because like I said, your heart's trying to cool off your body. It's working too hard. The rest of them have kind of the same symptoms. But if you feel really, if you're an older adult and you feel like you're suffering from either and you're confused or you should call 911. If you do recover, you should at least let your uh, primary care physician know so they can follow up with you. Um, I threw this in. There are some medications that can make you less tolerant to the heat. You're going to want to talk to your uh, physician if you feel like you're on any of these blood pressure medications, which honestly, most of my people are on. Those make you at a higher risk for heat exhaustion and heat-related illness, antihistamines, decongestants, 
um, treatments for overactive bladder, stimulant medications, and psychiatric medications. So that's a big list. I recommend just talking to your doctor so that you can understand the risk of the heat and your medication you're taking because it can make it a little more dangerous. And I think that is everything on my summer heat slideshow. So I guess we should assume that because pretty much all of us are going to fall in the category <laughs> of either we're taking these medications exactly. or just by nature of going outside here in the summertime, we know that we are going to be at risk for heat related illness. So our takeaway is that we need to be sure that we're staying hydrated. That's not hydrated. One. That's Make the important. Sure that we're drinking water. Take a bottle of water with you or a refillable water mm -hmm. uh, container, something that you can carry with you that has water so you can sip on it no matter where you're going. Make sure that we put on sunscreen. That is essential here in Texas and That's cover true. all of the exposed skin. That includes for me, the bald spot on top of my head, because that tends to get sunburned. And I don't remember that and don't think about it, but that your ears, yes. back of your neck, your legs, everything. That's everything, exposed. your feet. I have seen yeah. sunburned feet. Yeah. Every bit, your of hands. Skin. Every bit of it. Yeah. And to use an SPF of at least 15 higher is always recommended. 30 is a good starting point. Yeah, I recommend higher than 15, but... Yeah, and we need to remember that older skin is very fragile skin, mm -hmm. and it, it damages very easily. It dries out very easily, it tears easily, and it burns easily. And so we need to protect that skin. We need to moisturize when we're not in the sun, and we need to protect it with sunscreen anytime we go outside. Even if it's an overcast day in the summer, you can burn much easier on an overcast day than a cloudless day. Yes, you because you don't realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because no. the clouds will, the, the water in the clouds work like a magnifying glass. Yep. There's still you, those UV rays in there. Yeah, exactly. So we need to be sure that we are drinking lots of water, that we are covering up our skin either with clothing or with sunscreen. Wear a hat, to protect your uh, head, wear your sunglasses, protect your eyes, because we know that as we age, our eyes tend to have more issues with them. And so we need to keep them protected. And if we start feeling bad, if we start feeling dizzy, we start feeling nauseated, that's a warning sign that something is not right. We need to get into the AC. We need to sit down. We need to rest. We need to make sure that we're getting fluids into us. If we don't feel better after a few minutes, then something is very wrong. We need to call 911 because these can be dangerous issues, especially as we age. And here in Texas, the heat will sap you very, very quickly. So you need to kind of keep, if, if you're going somewhere, you're outside, keep in the back of your mind, what am I going to do if I don't start feeling good? Kind of keep an eye out of where's the closest place I can go sit down in the shade. Where is some place I can go inside? And, and if I am not with people that I know, how can I let someone know that something's wrong so that they can call 911 for me? Correct. You can go into any store that might be nearby, a convenience store, any place that may have air conditioning or someone that can help you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, this Texas heat can be very dangerous, very fast. Yes. And as you mentioned, it can come up on you very quickly. And, you know, you don't want to be trapped out at the park and suddenly start feeling bad because if you're not prepared, you're going to be in trouble. So make sure that you've got your water with you. You've got shit, your sunscreen. It's even a smart idea to take a umbrella with you. You know, umbrella provides a great amount of shade and it will also help protect your skin. And, you know, we're talking not only about a sunburn, but we're also talking about the potential for skin cancer. Skin cancers, which I actually see often. Yes. You know, and we always hear about, you know, that it's the repeated exposure to the sun that causes skin cancer. Well, when we, as we age, remember our skin quality has changed. 
And so it doesn't take many exposures to the sun to cause skin cancer when we're older. And so we need to prevent that. So again, remember to keep yourself covered and protected. Remember to have water with you, not a Diet Coke, yeah. not, not your iced tea, no not, iced tea. not a beer. <laughs> No, it's water. Water is what your body needs to replace the water. lost moisture in your cells. And so you need to have the water. Uh, sports drinks can be helpful, especially with the electrolytes in them. But that's kind of an after the fact. Yes, yeah, water. For, for your prevention, you need to carry water with water. you. And if you are feeling bad, seek help. Don't get in your car and try to drive yourself. That's dangerous. Go somewhere that's where you can cool down, get in the shade, and where someone can help you. And as Joy said, there's never, ever anything wrong with asking for help. We all need it at some points in our lives. And especially when you're having a medical emergency, you need to ask for it. Agreed. Joy, thank you so much for joining us with all this information. We know that this summer is going to be a very hot one. It always is in Texas. Always. So being forewarned is being forearmed. And so knowing what we can do to prevent any health-related illness is always important for us, especially as we age and as we take care of our older loved ones. We have information on our website at ageofcentraltx.org that has information about how you can protect yourself and keep yourself safe, and especially in the hot summers here in Texas. We invite you to join us every first Wednesday at the same time for our Aging Answers podcast, and the recordings of them are always on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com and search for Age of Central TX, and you'll find the information. Joy, thank you again for joining us. We thank you at home for joining us, and we hope that you have a wonderful and very safe summer. Thank you, Rob.